You've shown tremendous courage and character in these past few days. You are your father's sons. And uh, he was he was so, so very proud of you from everything that I have heard. And just know, as hard as it is to believe, he will be part of your life, the entirety of your life. Mom, uh, no child should predecease a parent. My heart aches for you, and Maritza, I know from experience there are no words that uh, I can offer to ease that profound sense of loneliness and loss you're feeling right now. But I also know from experience that the time will come. The time will come when Raphael's memory will bring a smile to your lips before it brings a tear to your eyes. That's when you know it's going to be okay. I know it's hard to believe that it'll happen, but I promise you, I promise you it will happen. And my prayer for you is that it will come sooner rather than later. There's a headstone in Ireland that reads, death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory that no one can steal. Just sitting here for a few moments looking at the screens, no one had to know your husband to not know how desperately he cared about his family, how close he was to all of you. You know, I didn't know your husband, and I didn't know his partner, who were keeping watch at Myrtle and Tomskins Avenue on that terrible afternoon. But I do know why they were there. They were there to protect and defend, as they always are. Sometimes fearful, but always watchful. I knew them. They're the guy I grew up with in Scranton and Claymont, Delaware. The boy with the most courage and the most compassion. The man with brave heart and a generous soul. A brother who always looked out for his sister. A father, a father whose words were always encouraging to you boys with a touch that could soothe away the fear. And a son who made his mother proud every time he turned and smiled at her. And a husband with a gentle hand who could soothe away the concerns who you knew would always be there. A former school safety officer became a cop at age 37, an active member of his church studying to become a chaplain. A father, a husband, a son, a seven-year veteran on the force, a son of a Chinese immigrant, his partner, conversing in several dialects, a newlywed, both confident, committed, passionate, and vigilant. Being a cop was not what they did, it was who they were, like every man and woman in uniform here today. It's who you are. And they, like every one of you in uniform inside this church and outside, you all joined for essentially the same reason. There was something about you that made you think you could help, that you should serve, that you had a duty. I've spoken at too many funerals for too many peace officers, too many funerals for brave, women and men who kept us safe and watched their families grieve. And I've observed one thing, that unfortunately, it's only when a tragedy like this occurs that all their friends, neighbors, and people who didn't even know them become aware of and reminded of the sacrifices they make every single solitary day to make our lives better. Today, we pay tribute to Officer Rafael Ramos and Wen Jin Liu, and we pay tribute to their families. 
Because every day when a police officer pins on that shield and walks out the door, the officer's wife, husband, mother, father, brother, sister, children, they know anything could happen. The fear of that call at 3 a.m. in the morning, the relief of hearing the voice of the door open says, I'm home. There's a line from the English poet, John Milton. He said, they also serve who only stand and wait. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of American families stand and wait so their husbands and wives, fathers and sons can serve the rest of us. Police officers and police families are a different breed. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. And your husband, Marisa, and his partner, they were a part of New York's finest. And that's not an idle phrase. This is probably the finest police department in the world. The finest police department in the world. They earned that phrase. It's a sacred trust they took on and they kiss their children's forehead as they sleep and head out on a night shift to watch over all the children of this great city, treating and protecting each of them as if they were their own. When you patrol the streets of New York, you circle the earth. A six-story walk up, apartment towers, aromas of millions of kitchens, continuing thousands of traditions. Streets full of silence, streets bursting with hundreds of languages, whispering, laughing, shouting. An intimidating city, a city of others, a city of labels and borders and seemingly unbridgeable gaps, a city constantly grappling with the issues as old as the nation and as new as the morning headlines. Yet in every neighborhood in this great city, this most alive of all cities, this chaotic miracle stands as a beacon to the world in no small part because of the sacrifices that the New York Police Department makes every single day. So when an assassin's bullet targeted two officers, it targeted this city and it touched the soul of the entire nation. A city where the son of a Chinese immigrant shared a patrol with a Hispanic minister in training. A city where a single ride on a subway brings you into contact with more people, more lives, than many people in this country will encounter in an entire lifetime. A city that educated a young college student with a mother from Kansas and a father from Kenya who would one day stand before the nation and declare this is not a black America or a white America or a Latino America or an Asian American. This is the United States of America.